Janice and Eddie are desperate. They've been living on the streets for weeks, and Janice has had enough. This wasn't part of her plan when she first lured Eddie away from his life in Yuba City, California, 120 miles from Reno. They were destitute, they had no money, they had nowhere to live, they were sleeping in a trash dumpster. It was getting very, very cold. She did like to gamble. And when she was out of work, she was spending quite a bit of time at the casinos. Pam's never been lucky at the slots, until recently. And now she hits her biggest jackpot yet. Oh my god. Oh my god! This time, with one pull, Pam wins over $8,000. Pam and Janice had a very minimal relationship until Pam won several jackpots at a local casino. At that time, Janice then began to try to get money from Pam. Any concerns Pam might have had about Janice and Eddie are quickly numbed by a shared smoke of crystal meth. Turns out gambling isn't Pam's only addiction. She used to tell me, Mom, I don't want to be this way. I don't want to be this way, but I just can't help it. Janice and Pam met each other up in a casino, so they saw each other from time to time around town. Pam doesn't have much, but she's always willing to help out a friend in need. And Janice, it turns out, has lots of needs. Today, Janice has her hand out because she knows that Pam has been on a winning streak at the slots. So what'd you do with that envelope? Why? It's hidden. Janice started hanging around more and more. She became more demanding with respect to money. And I think that caused Pam to be concerned. The activities at the casino showed that Pamela was gambling up until the day she died. And uh, she had gone to the uh, casino for a very short period of time. She had been there for approximately 20 minutes and then gone home. But when Pam Carter gets home that night, it isn't her husband, Tom, who's waiting for her. Instead, it's someone she barely knows. I know it's in here. Eddie Rodriguez, her friend Janice's boyfriend, has shown up with an accomplice. This would be a lot easier if you just told me where it was. They seem to know what they're looking for. Pam probably let them in because there was no forced entry. They used a cat toy to bind her hands. <laughs> then Eddie got on top of Pam. He was trying to shove a glove down her throat. That suffocating would be a horrible way to die with nobody there without her husband, without her family. Um, certainly nobody wants to go out like that. Hey, now help me walk. Finally, the intruders give up. They basically left her on the floor, and she suffocated on this glove. I believe that Eddie had that fundamental human need to talk about something that he had been through. I have to tell you something. In a drunken stupor on New Year's Eve, he would confess to his children that I did something really bad, that I killed a lady in Reno. And I'm gonna go to jail for it. Hi, Detective Chalmers. After Pam's murder, police had brought Eddie in for questioning and sent his DNA out for analysis. But they didn't have enough evidence to charge him yet. Once he confesses, he's arrested. Eddie Rodriguez never names his accomplice in the killing of Pam Carter. And police have no evidence to charge a second person with the crime. 
Eddie pleads guilty to first-degree murder and is sentenced to life without parole. Janice Walker has never been charged in connection with the murder. Pam's killers never found any of the $8,000 jackpot because she gambled it all away almost immediately after she won it. Why? Why? Was it worth it? Is he going through what I've been through? I know that he's in prison, and I hope he thinks about it every day, feels the guilt. I don't know what else to say. <laughs>